almost two years ago it was confirmed that the depicted cones on the heads of ancient Egyptian relief scenes were in fact real instead of figurative depictions, as was long thought. Researchers have discovered two burials in the past at Amarna where the mummified remains had these cones within their graves. One of them even had the cone on top of their head. At this point in time they do have more answers for us as to what this all means, although the mystery hasn't been completely solved. I'm Kaylee. Join me today in uncovering what we do know about these strange cones. Starting around 1549 BCE in the New Kingdom, depictions were created of ancient Egyptians wearing cone-shaped things on their heads. These depictions lasted for some 1500 years all the way into the Ptolemaic era in 30 BCE. The cones were usually white, sometimes partially colored, or had decorative marks. They were mostly seen in elite tomb relief scenes and paintings but they appear on Steely's papyri and coffins as well. They're mostly depicted being worn by both males and females, in banqueting scenes, scenes to honor the dead, by participation in funerary rituals, or as the wearer being rewarded by the pharaoh. But they are depicted being worn by people worshipping the gods, fishing and hunting scenes in the afterlife, scenes of childbirth, and when the wearer is playing music as well. For a long time, Debates have been going on as to the role and purpose of these cones. The most agreed interpretation is that these cones were created from a lump of scented perfumed wax or incense and that they would melt over time, sensing and cleansing the body and hair. This was mostly decided due to the depiction of anointing rituals where the wearer of the cones would use oils and perfumes. Some of the relief scenes and depictions of the cones show them on stands, in bowls, during the creation of them, and some even in the process of being placed on top of the head. Another reason as to why the researchers thought that the cones were made from a fatty, waxy substance is their observations of some African tribes that apply animal fat to their hair. Usually it's suggested that the cones are made from a wax or animal fat as the base material, with myrrh being the possible perfume. Plastered layers of textile or papyrus, wickerwork, wood or shaved hair are all suggested as a possible component as well. Balms were generally thought to purify the ancient Egyptians, placing them in an elevated status in the company of a god or after death. Some scholars have linked these cones with sensuality and sexuality as they have been associated with depictions of women, with and without clothes. In tomb scenes, they are associated with the rebirth of the usually male owner, or as symbols of the owner's status as a justified spirit in the afterlife. One scholar suggested that the cone could represent a person's ba after it had received divine offerings. The ba is the personality, or one's vital power, and is especially important after death when it would move from the grave and was able to interact with the living. This scholar, Padham, suggested that when the cone is shown on living individuals, the cone would represent the active state of their ba, which allowed them to interact with the gods more effectively. Since 2005, the non-elite graves have been the focus of archaeological excavations at Amarna, also known as Akataten, and more than 700 graves have been excavated across four cemeteries since. Of course, looting here was widespread as well, but thankfully these cemeteries still hold remarkable research potential for studying the non-elites in ancient Egypt. At Akhetaten, the mortuary beliefs seem to have changed compared to the other dynastic beliefs. For example, fieldwork has provided further evidence that the dead no longer joined Osiris and the gods in the afterlife, but instead remained in the world of the living, awakening their ba each dawn to worship and be nourished by the sun god Aten. At Akatata, the head cones featured in many different scenes, although it was quite scarce in the elite tomb scene. If it was used in their tomb scenes, the cones were worn by males, depicted to be rewarded by Akhenaten, and sometimes they were depicted praising the Aten. There are some rare scenes of elite individuals wearing cones as they participate in mortuary offering rituals and burial preparations. Most notably, however, are the two funerary steles that were recovered from non-elite cemeteries depicting individuals wearing cones. For a long time, these cones were thought to be entirely symbolic or part of a beautification ritual, because there was no archaeological evidence found in Egypt. This was until 2010, when archaeologists uncovered a cone at Amarna at a non-elite grave, dating from between 1347 and 1332 BCE. Eventually, in 2015, another cone was unearthed dating from the same time period. 
by using diffuse reflectance infrared Fourier transform spectroscopy, otherwise known as DRIFTS, they discovered the main component of the cones to be a biological wax. These finds had confirmed for the first time that these cones were actually used in real life and were not just simply symbolic depictions. The first cone was excavated at the South Tomb Cemetery in 2010. The female wearing the cone was approximately between 20 and 29 years of age. The age and sex were determined after the skull and pelvic bones were researched. The grave hadn't been robbed or disturbed before the archaeologists discovered it. The cone was placed on top of the well-preserved hair on the head. The cone wasn't completely preserved but had survived as six large pieces that still represented the full height on one side and part of the base. The cone originally would have measured to be approximately 8 cm high and 10 cm wide. It was a creamy color with a couple of dark patches on the exterior. It had a distinctive silky feel according to the archaeologists and it was quite brittle. It wasn't a solid mass either. It survived as a sort of shell with balls that are of a different thickness between 2.5 and 17 millimeters. Insects have tunneled their way in and out of the cone which has perforated the interior leaving voids into the original shape of the cone. Some of the irregularity of the walls may be attributed to these insect tunnels. On the inner surface of the cone are some crisscross markings. These may be suggestive of textile impressions and the darker patches could be the remnants of degraded textile itself. The textile might have been the attraction for the insects that eventually tunneled their way inside the cone. During excavations in 2015, the second cone was discovered in the North Tomb Cemetery. This grave belonged to an individual between the ages of 15 and 20. Unfortunately, tomb robbers had disturbed the grave and the body laid in disarray. Much of the torso and the skull lay jumbled into a pile in the bottom of the grave, although the legs and pelvis were still in their original position. Underneath the skull was a mass of hair, and within this mass, cone 2 was discovered. The sex of this individual could not be determined. Soft tissue obscured the sexual features of the cranium and pelvis, and the metric analysis wasn't possible because the skeletal growth wasn't complete at the time of death. The second cone survived as one large and two smaller separate pieces, and it looked incredibly similar to the first cone discovered five years earlier with dark patches and insect voids. The cone fragments are no longer resembling the original shape, but it was possible to envision the fragments being the remnants of a hollow cone that is similar to cone 1. It's thought that cone 2 would have been 8 cm long and approximately 6.8 cm wide and between 27 and 38 mm thick. The largest piece of cone 2 is made from a waxy material that's folded around brown-black layers of organic material. The waxy material is thinning away from the fold. It's unclear from which part of the cone this large piece is from. When it's placed in the way you currently see on the screen, the lower edge seems to be quite straight and it may have been the bottom that was placed on the head. The waxy material of the cone seemed to be layered with hardened body fluids and soft tissue. This might have not been part of the original cone itself. It's possible that when the grave robbers removed the skull, a piece of soft tissue got stuck on the cone and gradually became intertwined with it. Because the largest piece has this fold, it's not possible to inspect the interior surface. Although, on the second largest piece, this surface was visible, but it doesn't show textile impressions like we saw in cone 1, and there is no organic matter present. The third and smallest piece has a small fold enclosing dark and organic matter. The cones were analyzed using non-destructive methods like drifts, the diffuse reflectance infrared Fourier transform spectroscopy, and X-ray fluorescence spectroscopy, otherwise known as XRF. Spectra taken from the interior of both cones showed characteristics of a type of plant or animal wax. In cone 1, there was a calcium fatty acid. This is typical decay formed from wax aster disintegration. A wax ester is formed by combining one fatty acid with one fatty alcohol. The most well-known and most used wax ester is beeswax, but jojoba nuts store as much as 50% of wax esters as well. Because beeswax has been known to have been used by the ancient Egyptians and because it's a biological wax, the researchers have agreed it's most likely the wax used in cone 1. The researchers discovered the wax was manufactured by processing it with alkali or seawater. 
The exterior of the cones are made up from calcium carbonate, kaolinite and other silica species. The exterior materials are most likely from burial deposits instead of deliberate applied pigments. Cone 1's exterior had a higher quantity of calcium carbonate, clays and other soil materials. 14 locations on the hair directly underneath the cone of the female found with cone 1 were analyzed. Wax was not detected in any of the 14 locations of the hair. This suggests that there was no transfer of the cone material into the hair. The discovery at Akataten, or Amarna as you will, did confirm that these cones were actually used in real life by the ancient Egyptians. Although the discovered examples did not maintain their solid form, but survived as an undecorated wax shell that formed a small and low dome. The cones were most likely shaped around a textile inner lining for structural strength. It's unclear if the wax was ever produced using perfumes. The techniques used to analyze the cones weren't able to detect any perfumes, so even in the case of perfumes being used, they would have evaporated after the burial. It's entirely possible that the discovered cones were model versions specially made for the burials and that the cones worn by the living were constructed completely different. Of course, none of this can be confirmed. It's an educated guess. And there is of course no reason to assume the living wouldn't wear hollow or textile lined cones of wax. Even if they were scented, they may have never been intended to melt and moisturize, but may have served as a mark for the wearer to be identified as purified or protected. The discovered cones at the very least show that these cones were not restricted to the upper elites. Of course, the fact that they weren't discovered anywhere else and the rarity of these cones may suggest that they were used only in special burials under specific circumstances. Perhaps both bodies belonged to a female, and perhaps it has to do with birth and rebirth. There is a possibility the individuals may have died during or after childbirth, and the cones may have purified them for the afterlife as a symbol of rebirth and fertility. We may never truly know, but I was incredibly fascinated by these cones and their possible usage in life and death. But with that said, you've reached the end of this video. If you enjoyed watching, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you'd like to see more of these kind of videos and click that bell icon if you want to be notified every time I upload. If you haven't seen my previous videos yet, then click the card in the upper right corner. I've put links in the description down below and you can always click one or two of the videos in the end card. I'd also like to thank my Patreons. Richard, Barry, Scott, James, Floyd, Vaughn, Rox, Prabhu DC, NGC6543. And I would like to thank my channel members, Neighbors Guy, Yellowhammer, Henry Hewitt, Steve and Jenny, and Ben Oppenheimer. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. And a comb. Would I look good with a comb? Hmm. I don't think so.